Hey everyone, Irit here with another daily video exploring each and every color in my summer palette and using this lovely Fabriano sketchbook. I put a link to a new uh, place where you can buy this. Thank you, Tina. If I didn't uh, thank you <laughs> in a video, <laughs> then... Oh, let's talk about this color for a second. So this is Holbein Horizon Blue. I have it in my palette. It's a color I've had in my stash for a while. It's one of these colors, the formulation, it has three pigments, PB15, PG7, and white. So phthalo blue, phthalo green, and white. And basically what you get is a very beautiful color. You can see it's kind of this uh, bluish turquoise, I would say, that has um, this brightness and lightness to it. It's not a very um, deep color. The value is pretty light. Um, and I would guess that this is an attempt to make a more affordable version of something like cobalt teal. The, this is the vibe that I'm getting from this. Uh, I wouldn't say unless you really like this color as it is and you don't have cobalt teal in your palette, I wouldn't uh, really get this. I mean, it's it's nice, but it will probably be one of the first colors that I, I feel are kind of redundant in my palette. If I wanted uh, an even more kind of pastel -y or opaque version of my cobalt teal, then I would mix it with a little bit of white or a little bit of buff titanium. But uh, this color, yeah, it's not... It's pretty it's not very necessary. So I decided to pair it with the um, Shinhan Bright Red. And I did this also, I think when I used the Bright Red, I think I also paired um, these two because they are almost complementary colors. Not completely. I think if I mixed not I think, but and if I mix them, I get a very, very muted purple. So it's not uh, completely neutralizing each other, but they do really make uh, the other one pop. And I thought I was going to try and make kind of these red flowers. So basically I'm using this turquoisey color as my background slash sky. And for me, when you paint in this very kind of loose way, the challenge is to keep it loose and keep it light and keep that transparent feel, but also have enough detail and contrast to, you know, add interest. So I decided to go with one of my trusty charcoal pencils. And I think this is the black one. And what I like about these is that you can see that when I uh, scribble through wet paint, everything is still pretty wet now, it really activates the charcoal um, as opposed to when I'm scribbling on dry paper. And it activates it, but it doesn't flow. So there's no muddiness. It's You can get a very, very, very simple effect with a water soluble pencil when you do it in this uh, order I feel that you go you know pencil after uh, watercolor but the problem is always with these kind of things is that if you add too much pencil and then you go over with too much water things can get muddy and I don't want that so these charcoal pencils work well for me. Oh, there I go. So I'm trying to see the differences so that it's not just in my head. <laughs> but you can see I have one pencil. The first one is the, what's it called? The Lumograph one. That is not water soluble. So you can see the, the wet water does nothing for it. Then I have the, char the charcoal. And then I have this one. This is the Stabilo All Pencil in black. And you can see it's very similar to the charcoal. Once you go into that wet paint, it activates it. But I feel that the Stabilo one just moves a little bit more and then you have a slightly bigger risk of muddying things up. So I really, I am really, really enjoying the charcoal pencils. And I also like that scratchy charcoal, 
you know, sketchy lines. I really enjoy that. Okay, going in with my trusty Pro Art uh, sword brush for some detail. And what else did I want to tell you? Oh, so thanks again to Tina who found <laughs> these journals for us at uh, Cult Pens, a UK online store. Um, things seem to be, you know, running out of stock, um, which hopefully means that you manage to get your hands uh, on a journal or two um, because these are lovely. And I had a question. Someone asked me what happens when you add a lot of water. So you can see I'm not painting with a ton of water here, but I have to say this paper, especially when I compare it to other journals that I've used it really doesn't buckle a lot. So it might buckle a little bit when I'm doing heavier washes, but once it's dry, I think it's pretty. Yeah, I'm, I have it right here next to me. Yeah, it's pretty flat. It handles water really, really well. I, I don't know how they formulated this paper, Fabriano, but um, they did a fantastic job. Really, to me, I'm feeling like this is kind of my perfect um, watercolor sketchbook. The paper is rather thin, but still holds watercolor so beautiful. I, I don't know how they did it, but <laughs> it's, it's fantastic. Um, they are pricey, these sketchbooks, but as I said, you know, if you can afford it and you're someone that you know if you have very kind of inviting pretty supplies are more likely to paint or if you want a present i think these are fantastic i'll leave the link below um as of yesterday july 27th the only color that was available in the size that i'm using is the orange one and but the smaller one and the bigger one were still available so check it out if you want it's not an affiliate link i don't earn anything i've just you, you see me i'm painting every single day in this journal i'm loving it and i really you know i'm looking forward to i'm enjoying the process but i'm also looking forward to um seeing it complete and yeah just also looking forward to starting a new one i would absolutely just move on to another one of the same because it's such a lovely lovely sketchbook. Uh, what else I want to say? Oh, I counted today how many more pages I have left and I have about 20 more pages left and surprisingly also about 20 more paints in my palette. So it looks like I will be able to go on until um, we go through all of the colors and finish the sketchbook. Very exciting. And I think I'll just keep going because it's, it's working. So the first layer was dry or dried and now I'm going back in. I felt it needed more. So I'm trying to get kind of the maximum I can from the colors that I've already used before I start adding darker colors. So another layer of that bright red uh, can really help the flowers pop and give them a little bit of definition a little bit of that um, you know hint of a petal and while that second addition of red is still wet I can drop at the center of the florals some lunar black and get even more contrast and darker values and of course some splatters so yeah this is quite uh, monochromatic for me and I have to say, yeah, I have a problem with some colors that when I use a lot of them, I'm not kind of in love with my process. And this kind of red, I really adore this color. I love this color, but not a lot of it. And I think the way that I could probably create something very very similar even if I wanted to stay with these flowers as opposed to you'll see in the next uh, videos after I make a mess <laughs> then I kind of go back to my <laughs> roots of the more rose-like flowers but I think if I try to do something that is more true to my color preferences I could probably 
do the most of the flower petals in a softer color so maybe mix that bright red with a bit more white and then just add some pops of the color in its pure saturation but yeah I think I was there I had a few pages where I was just not really there not like fully committed kind of distracted and you know it's completely okay not every page has to be fantastic amazing and it is fun to try new things um also you can see and i think it's probably going i'm not sure how much i can keep the the color of the day as really like a main dominant color especially when it comes to greens and turquoises and uh, neutrals they many times they play kind of second fiddle in my painting so we'll see how that goes but yeah here are some close-ups i hope you enjoyed the video i definitely enjoyed painting and i'll see you tomorrow for a messiness <laughs>